Okay, there, fellow pop fans, we are on to the next episode of Lost Treasures. And this one actually excites me quite a lot personally because the three albums that we are going to be looking at today are, um, well, at least two of the three are real personal favorites of mine, but they certainly are favorites on all across the board. We're going to talk about Robert Ellis Oral. We're going to talk about the Dodgers. We are going to talk about Hilly Michaels. Where to begin? Oh, this might be a long one. Look out. Okay, Robert Ellis Oral. He grew up in Boston, and I grew up in Boston, so I heard about Robert Ellis early on. He got a record contract with RCA, who started an imprint to capitalize on the whole power pop uh, new wave thing called Wi-Fi. I think they only released two records on that imprint before it faded away, and unfortunately for Oral, uh, he sort of got caught up in that. He released three records, actually two and a half on RCA from 1980 to 83 or so. Uh, one of those was an EP uh, called Special Pain that had a uh, song with Carleen Carter, who was married to Nick Lowe at the time, called I Couldn't Say No. Uh, I think it was called Okay, I think I couldn't say no, which did make the top 40. Uh, good for him. But the album that, for Power Pop fans, that you want to focus on is really only one. It's the first one. It's called Fixation. And this is one that's never been released on CD, as has none of his uh, early uh, output on RCA. None of that came has come out on CD. But this one is a must-find. I'm going to include some songs here for you to listen to and download below. Um, and hopefully you will see why. They only released one single from this album, a song from it called Actually, that was probably the right choice for a song at that time, but they didn't really seem too committed to it. Uh, and uh, it, it died without a trace, even in Boston. Um, I saw the band live in 1981. Uh, they, uh, they had Whitford St. Holmes open up for them at the Paradise Theater, I remember. Whitford St. Holmes was Brad Whitford and Derek St. Holmes from uh, Ted Nugent's band. It was a great show, though. Both bands rocked, um, which was really awesome. Robert Ellis Oral went on to uh, uh, become a country writer. Not a country star. He's, he's released some uh, country albums on his own. He lives in Nashville now. But he's written for Taylor Swift, uh, Shenandoah, Reba McIntyre, um, I think he even did a song for some songs for Lindsay Lohan. Uh, we'll forgive him for that. Actually, I didn't need to mention that. Um, that might taint, taint his uh, legacy here. But uh, Robert Ellis Oral Fixation uh, is an album that uh, you really, really want to track down. The cover kind of looks like that, if you can see. Let's get that in there like that, like that. Um, so um, let's move on to the next one, which is The Dodgers. Uh, this album came out on uh, Polydor, by Polygram, actually, in 1978, um, I believe. The band came together in 76 after Badfinger broke up. Bob Jackson and Tom Evans uh, put the band together uh, after Pete Ham had killed himself in 75. And they got a deal with Island Records, and they released three singles to see if anything would light on fire. Uh, and nothing, unfortunately, really did with any of those singles. They are really good songs if you can track them down. I, uh, and there's a bootleg out there um, called Lost at Ebbets Field, uh, which is a reference to the Brooklyn Dodgers. Yeah, for all you baseball fans out there, you know that already. But... Uh, that that bootleg contains those six songs that did not appear on the album Love on the Rebound, which came out in 78. Took them a while to get another record deal, but the Bad Finger legacy sort of was uh, ripped away because uh, the management uh, uh, kicked out Tom Evans and the band in 77. Uh, I guess he was having drinking problems, and, uh, and unfortunately, a lot of his problems did continue because, like Pete Ham, he uh, went on to kill himself some years later. I think it was in 1983. Uh, continuing the tragic legacy of, of Badfinger, uh, sadly and tragically. Um, but Love on the Rebound uh, came out in 78. Uh, all Tom Evans' uh, tracks on there were ripped ripped away and re-recorded by somebody else. 
Uh, nonetheless, it is an album uh, that has, one, never appeared on CD, and two, contains a lot of really, really, really good songs for Power Pop fans, and I will include some of my personal favorites uh, here below as well. It's not all good. There's some really sappy crap on there. Uh, that fits in the late 70s kind of trying to find a hit, middle of the road kind of stuff. But when it's good, it's real good. Last up, we have Hilly Michaels, who released two records on Warner Brothers. And uh, they were uh, called uh, Calling All Girls and Lumia. And they came out in 1980 and 81. Hilly Michaels, um, I, I knew because I'm a huge fan of Sparks. And Hilly Michaels played drums on one of my favorite Sparks records, Big Beat, in 1976. And he was part of that band. And it was a big, big, aggressive drum sound that he brought to uh, that particular project by Sparks. Um, let's see, I wrote down, he's played with a whole bunch of other people, including, which I didn't know until I did some research before shooting this, Michael Bolton in the very early 70s in a band called Joy. Um, Michael Bolton was one really busy guy in the 70s before he became a superstar in the 80s. Um, and actually, I've heard a lot of his work, and it actually does not suck. He actually had played with a lot of really good rock bands uh, in the 70s before he became a uh, drippingly sappy, um, schmaltzy kind of singer in the late 80s. Um, but uh, uh, Hilly played with uh, Hunter in the Hunter and Ronson band, uh, in in the uh, 80s and late 70s as well with Ellen Foley. What else do I have? John Cougar Mellencamp and Cherry Vanilla uh, on the New York scene. And he also had a song in Caddyshack and uh, in Sparks he appeared in Roller Coaster, um, which uh, for any children of the 70s who remember the uh, sensor round special effects, Roller Coaster was one of those movies that had the amazing sensor sound along with uh, uh, what was uh, Earthquake. That was the other movie that had sensor sound. Let's talk about the records here, though. Um, <laughs> both of these, I've heard rumors for years that these were going to come out on CD. Alas, they have not. Who knows why, which is really too bad for most of you out there. Um, but now that you know about these records, if uh, you should start looking for them and see what you can find online. I'll include some samples here as well so you can check out some of my favorites. Um, but when they do come out on CD, and hopefully they will, uh, pick these two up. It would be great if they come out as a twofer. Uh, both records aren't all great. I'd say both, though, are about two-thirds pretty darn great to very good. Um, and there's just uh, wonderful work uh, all throughout all this. Uh, and there's a lot of great session people on there. Dan Hartman plays on it as well. And uh, Hilly Michaels writes a really mean, very well-crafted power pop tune. And you be the judge below. So those are my three picks here for this episode of Lost Treasures here at Pop Geek Heaven. And please leave your comments below. Tell me what you think of these records. I really would love to hear what you think um, about these artists and these records. And uh, share with the rest of the community here uh, your thoughts and your opinions on some of these and anything that you would like to appear, see appear on future episodes of Lost Treasures. Please get in touch with me at Pop Geek Heaven at gmail.com. Until next time, this is Lost Treasures.